All right, this time we're going to be introducing the Bar Mills Company kit, Jeffrey's Point Barrel and Stave Company. Now here you see the packaging, and this is truly a craftsman kit. If you've never done a craftsman kit before, you might want to do some other kits first. Speaking of other kits, here are some of the other kits that Bar Mill offers. And of course, these kits, almost all of them, are offered in different scales. So almost any of the modelers can find something fun to do. This is what the structure should look like when I get done. Now these craftsman kits, they come with a veritable book of information on how to put them together. In fact, there's so many parts, they have to give you a parts register so you can keep track of where things are. Look at the detail here. Look at all the different pieces that go together to make the doors and the windows. They give you a number of different signs that you can put on your, on your structure. Now you really do, I'm sorry, you have to read the directions and really follow what they're telling you to do. Because sometimes it just won't go together correctly if you don't. Now most all of these box type structures are square or rectangular. Look here, this is not a square or rectangular building. Here we are all set up and ready to go. Ready to have some fun with this, this particular building. Now I always take the time to look around and check things out and as you can see here some of the nebs have not been removed from the cutting and while I was removing these nibs I realized that well a lot of the parts have their own sticky background on them so you're not even going to have to use glue on some of it. As I build these structures I always keep track of parts that I have used and have not used. It just makes it easier to keep track of what's going on. Of course you never have too many handy helpers. Now I have to admit I don't always follow the directions just exactly like they tell me to. Matter of fact this time I'm starting with different pieces. Always take the time to clean up the nubs. It just makes a real big difference. Now I'm building the stone loading dock first and I always like to add a little extra color to it. Now here I am putting the walkway on the stone walkway loading dock I should call it and here you th here you see it what do you think came out really nice there's the first part of my new kit I know I probably should have built them later but I didn't now you do want to be really careful how these kits go together because there is very distinctively lefts and rights ups and downs and look at the detail that's burned into these decking just amazing quality that's why they call them of course craftsman's kit now with the craftsman kit you generally have a lot of room for variation. Now this is one of the hardest pieces that I always have to deal with is building the staircases which is generally why I make them first. I build them first so I can get them out of the way. And then before long you have a whole bunch of subsections ready to go. What do you think? Okay it's not in order but I'm moving. Moving right along looking at the dry weathering powders they're all different kind of colors, but you do want to be very careful about doing the brushwork. You don't want to break any of that intricate aspect. And here's just one of my sets of these weathering powders and some of the colors. I have three or four sets around here. They don't work in everything, but they work on wood and paper products really well. And here we have everything colored up, ready to go. Look at the color here. I really like the way that these weathering powders go on. It ends up giving you a nice inconsistent color, very much like real life faded paint. Don't forget the nibs. Got to make sure to clean the nibs up. Now I did decide to put the corner posts in before I put the walls together. It's your choice of course, but I find it just works better. And here we have the multiple layers of windows and doors going together. Pretty cool, huh? Of course you want to make sure everything's nice and square and plumb before you start gluing things together. If things aren't square to start, then, well, your model's just not going to go together. And here's the false roof joist system that Bar Mills uses. And look at how great it comes out. Look at that detail. I like it. And here's another subassembly finished and ready to go and gets put in the pile. So let's see. What are we going to work on next? Hmm. All right, fine. I have to admit it, sometimes I make mistakes. In fact, I made a couple of them in this kit. 
You'll notice that I just couldn't get those big doors to fit right. A little bit of trim took care of it. Wasn't until much later I realized I missed an entire step. And while we have these pieces flat on the workbench, let's go ahead and put some of the signs on. Here we've got all the wall major pieces ready to go. Looks like fun to me. Looks like it should fit together. Now we're going to be putting wall bracing on, and of course nothing works better at repetitive cuts than the Chopper 2 from the Northwest Shortline folks. Get one. And here we are putting some of the backing on. You got to get them in the right place and the right size. Make sure to read the directions. And of course you want to keep everything in place while the glue goes off. Now with these walls, as I mentioned earlier, this kit is not square or rectangular. So you glue to start only on the left hand side wall and you want to make sure that everything is really square and 90 degrees. And as you move forward with these interior walls, same thing. Make sure that when you glue them on, they're very square. Now when you put the other side on, the right side, well, you got to take your time and get it just exactly in the right place. Remember that it does not go on square. Of course, you want to keep everything nice and in place when the glue goes off. Handy helpers to the rescue again. Well, here we are starting to try to fit some of the sub-assemblies on and see how they fit. And of course, we're adding more of the roof joists. I just love these roof joists. It's a wonderful little additional bit of detail, but you do have to get them in correct. They also act as backing for the roof. Oh no, I made another mistake when I put on these signs. I put them in the wrong place, so I had to take off the old sign and put in a new sign because, well, the subassembly covered it up. Now this kit comes with rolled roofing and also shingles, but of course, when was the last time you saw a white roof? So you gotta color this roofing material. And it comes with adhesive backing, but boy, you better get it right the first time because it doesn't want to come off once you mess it up. So there you have it, we're working on flat roofs. Well, as you see, not only does this kit come with rolled roofing, but also some very nice shingles. Now be careful with these shingles because they're very fragile and they break easily. Now I found that as I was adding the roof panels that they didn't fit quite right. So I had to do a little bit of modeling by Dennis to get it together. And oh, it's time to put all those extra bits together, all those subsections that we worked on earlier. And don't forget the rain cover. And notice that I used some metal on some of the roofs just for something different. And here's the last major project, just putting together the face of the building. And it's uh, a little intricate, so take your time. And oh no, there are those stairs, my nemesis. So uh, be real careful. I was a little concerned I was going to break them putting together, but I didn't. Well, okay, I knocked one tread off, but I glued it back on. And don't forget about all the extras that come with this kit. All this stuff is in the box when you open it up. And look at that. Look at all those empty parts backing. So that must mean if all the parts are gone, we must be done. And here's a look at this wonderful Bar Mills kit. This was lots of fun. Took me about 14 hours to put together. And did I have a good time with it? You bet. Now, if you're ready for the step up in your modeling to craftsman style kits, you might want to look into the Bar Mill Company. They've got a whole bunch of different stuff and a whole bunch of different scales. And I can guarantee you it's more work, but they come out just better. Have fun. Come back and see me again sometime. Bye, guys.